Hey guys, here's the black Bakelite Admiral TV cabinet that I picked up recently at a radio swap fest. I want to do a little video on cleaning it. There are lots of techniques, lots of suggestions, lots of products. Everybody seems to have their favorite for cleaning Bakelite. And I don't claim to have any original ideas. I'm just going to show some of the stuff that I've used in the past and found out worked well and I can pick up easily. For example, I always hear that an earlier type of Brasso brass cleaning solution works great. Uh, the older style came in a, a metal can. Uh, and that may all be well and true, but they haven't sold it in years, so you, you really can't find it. So not, not the most helpful suggestion, I think. Um, so to get started, I just want to clean this thing off. I have heard that using ammonia-based products like window cleaner can damage or dull the Bakelite surface, so what I'm going to use is just some dish detergent. I'll uh, mix some of this up with some warm water, take sponge, and wipe the whole thing down. That should make it look considerably better. And it uh, looks like in here we've got, oh, maybe the makings of wasp nests or something like that. Seems like a hard papery kind of substance in there clean that out too. I want to remove this. I think it's held on by some screws in the back. I'm not entirely sure. I've never taken one of these apart before. Uh, oh no. I think it's... yeah. <laughs> it's the dreaded push-on metal tabs that go over the Bakelite plugs. It looks like three of them are already gone though, so I just have to get the one off. And I'll get the speaker out of there too so it doesn't get wet. So it's pretty dirty inside here. There's not much left of the original label down in there. You can't see the model number anymore. The reason I'm curious about that is there were a few different models of this. Or I should say that it was kind of a second generation. There was a 19A11 that um, uh, you commonly see, but there was also a 17. T11, T12, something like that. One of them has what they call the Chinese grill, which are like concentric squares. Um, but there's, I think, one that comes in a cabinet like this, and I think those are both bat, uh, black Bakelite rather than brown. So I'm not 100% sure what the real model number is for this. Uh, other than dirt, this cabinet looks to be in pretty good shape. There aren't any breaks or chips or anything. The only bad thing is this channel plate. The corner's broken off here. These were made to be removed, and there's a little hole in here, so a serviceman could put an alignment tool down in there and tweak the oscillator for each channel as you rotate the dial. And they're, they're always warped. I've seen several other, uh, several other examples of these sets, including the two that I've got, and these are always warped, but I've never seen one with a chip broken off. And because my other cabinets are brown, I can't swap out one of those channel plates to put on this one because it won't look so hot with brown against black. Let's see, how is that holding on? Um, hmm, I'm not sure what's holding that on. Might just be, might just be pressure. The speaker's partially covering it, so I'll get that out first. That'll be easier to see what's going on. I was pleasantly surprised to find that these metal clips actually came off fairly easily. I just used some flat bladed screwdrivers to get in there and get underneath these pointy bits there and pried them up a bit and they popped right off. So I got the speaker out. Looks to be in fine condition. And here's the gasket that goes around the screen. It's seen better days, but I might be able to salvage one from a, that broken cabinet I've got. And here is the screen, which looks horrible, but I think that's just all dirt that'll come right off. And here's inside the cabinet now. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of all this dirt from the insides. I'm going to use a brush to loosen it up and get out as much as I can and I'll switch over to a sponge and uh, soapy water. I 
I ended up just sticking the whole cabinet in my shower and washed it down with some warm soapy water. So it's a lot cleaner now, but incredibly dull. So what can you do about that? As I said earlier, there are a lot of opinions out there. Everybody's got their own favorite product. I'll give you a quick rundown on some of these products I've tried in the past. There are two basic techniques you can do with dull Bakelite. You can put something on it or you can polish off the Bakelite itself. So these are some products in the, in the coating category. But first up we have something called Glaze It, which was originally designed for Bakelite telephones I believe. It comes in an aerosol can, shake it up, spray it on, it has kind of a foaming action and you buff it out. It's a silicone based product, kind of like pledge furniture polish I guess. It works okay, uh, but it does go dull every few months. You'll have to spray a little more on and buff it out again. But in cases like this where it's physically rough feeling, it's still going to be rough. You're just making it look shiny. Similar Howard's Feed and Wax, which is actually for wood furniture, but you can put this on Bakelite too. My problem is that Bakelite is really chemically resistant and any kind of oils and waxes you put on this are just going to sit on the surface and actually make it a little bit sticky and it'll really attract dust. But it does look alright. You just have to keep reapplying it every, every so often. And then we've got actual car wax products like McGuire's Tech Wax. These work pretty good. Um, and they'll do a better job on some of these rougher areas because it does have a bit of a buffing action. Especially if you use some like scratch out which does have some, some abrasive to it and helps work out some of the roughness. But what I really like to do is the second category where you actually buff out the Bakelite itself. In cases where it's really really bad I'll actually wet sand it. I did a video a while ago on what I've called a, a Frankenroll set because it's a, a mismatch of a chassis and a Bakelite cabinet. If you look for part one of Frankenrolla video, I uh, believe that's the one where I show how I wet sanded this whole cabinet down. But that was for a pretty drastic case because that cabinet was really, really dull. This one isn't quite so bad. So products like this are a little more appropriate. So we've got some Noxon and Brassa, which are metal polishes basically a fine grit and liquid squirt it on there and buff it out and uh, I won't get it super shiny but it'll take down some of this roughness then you can move on to products like Nova's number two which is the stuff I'm always using for knobs and plastic they also work it also works pretty well rather on big lights and beyond that uh, Simichrome metal polish will, is even slightly finer abrasive than Nova's number two and that also works well this does have some scratches which could probably be helped by wet sanding but before I bother with that I want to use some Novus number two and just just to see how good I can make this so I'll grab a rag squirt some of this on there and start buffing it out all right so I shook it up pretty good squirt some under this cloth work into the cloth a little bit and then start applying it. If this starts to dry out, I'll squirt more on. You want to let it dry on its own to a haze, which you then buff out after the fact. You want it to stay wet while you keep working it like this. And look at that. <laughs> now, some people, when they first see this, think it's nicotine, you know, from smokers. But no, it's generally, it's really actually some of the Bakelite surface wearing off. That's all right, that's, that's kind of the point, because this is an abrasive and you want to wear down that layer a bit to get it smooth again. So this top surface is pretty easy to do, just one big flat surface. Doing the front of this is a nightmare. <laughs> I don't have any good tips for how to do all these little honeycomb uh, squares any better. Uh, basically just slop the, the novice in there and get out some toothpicks and uh, q-tips and so on. Just make sure you don't use anything metal otherwise you scratch the bake light. You gotta use wood or plastic or cloth. 
it's why my other set that I got two years ago, I, <laughs> I haven't uh, done those yet either. I just did the top of it and some of the side. Sides are kind of a pain too because they have all these uh, raised stripes which look nice but it means that you really have no choice. You can only go like this and there's definitely going to be some leftovers in the edge here so toothpicks I think will work good on that. See it's already dried out here so I'll take a separate cloth. You see to do this in sharp strokes and to keep rotating your cloth here is a clean surface. Well, I can already tell that this is still really rough. You know, I think I will go with wet sanding on this. But, but unfortunately, I don't think I have the right grits on hand. I think I'm down to only 1,000 grit, and I really want to go up to 3,000. So I'll have to do a little shopping expedition before I can try wet sanding. In the meantime, though, I'll keep going with this. I finished two more rounds with the Novus number two, and I also moved to another room that has better air conditioning. It's still really hot around here. So now I've got a nice, smooth, semi-gloss finish, I guess you call it. And I could stop right now and be perfectly happy with it. Looks a heck of a lot better than it was. Perfectly respectable. You can see a nice reflection there, I think. But I want to go a little bit shinier, so I'm going to use one last product, which is Simichrome. Now this is designed as a metal polish for chrome, brass, aluminum, and so on. But I've discovered that it actually works quite well in Bakelite. And it's a little bit finer grit than the Novus number 2, so a little bit shinier. It's a kind of a pink liquid. It's been sitting a while, you may need to stir it up like this is separated a little. So it looks like just a pink goo, kind of like Pepto Bismol. And this is hard to work in. I won't kid you. <laughs> I showed this in an earlier video when I polished up uh, a big Bakelite uh, Admiral console set. And uh, so far, I still haven't finished that set up in the top one side in the front. I still have one side left to do. Now, uh, by all means, if you've got a rotary attachment on a power drill to the buffing wheel, and you've got some buffing compounds, absolutely use them. Um, I don't. I do have an electric drill, but I do not have the buffing compounds or the buffing wheel. I actually stopped by Pep Boys tonight to get some, uh, some supplies, and I was checking out their buffing supplies and uh, pretty expensive. I, I was surprised, uh, especially the compounds, like 30, 40 bucks a bottle for each grade and I'm not going to spend that kind of money just on this one little cabinet. So I'll just do it by hand. Yeah. Like I said, this does take a lot of work. I'll have to do a few passes to really get this worked in good. I finished going over the top of the Simichrome and I'm quite happy with the way it turned out. Nice and shiny. I also spent time and went over the sides. I used a toothpick against all those ribs there and got most of the crud off. I'll have to do a couple more passes to get it all off. And I need to go over the vent holes, which it shouldn't take too much work. Got this side done too, which leaves the front. I got the main areas done, and I removed the channel plate, which wasn't too hard. So there are four holes drilled through here, and our little metal collars inserted. And then this piece of molded plastic has four pegs that slide into those holes to keep it in place. Now this is quite warped, as is the channel plate in every one of these sets I've seen. I think it's just the type of early plastic they used just didn't hold up well over time, and they all get warped and distorted. 
This one is especially bad though, and the corner's knocked off. So what I'm hoping I can do is take it off of this set, which is the broken cabinet. This set's brown, but I don't think this dark brown will look too bad against the black. And as you can see, this one is warped too, but it's not quite as bad. And if the brown doesn't really look that good, I can always paint it black. Once all this is completely cleaned out good, I'm going to take some white paint and rub it into these recessed lettering. Uh, here, 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 and maybe the channel plate too. This one isn't so bad, just uh, very dirty. And that leaves the speaker grill. I uh, have yet to come up with any good way of cleaning this. Um, so, <laughs> uh, best thing I can think of is to use Q-tips. Tedious, but it looks pretty bad the way it is. So, I'll just have to take the time and effort to clean it out. I managed to pry all the useful parts out of the broken brown cabinet. They were held in by more of these lovely metal clips. So, got the speaker, which has a hole in it, but it's not too bad. All the papers there just needs to be pushed back into shape, and then a little bit of glue will take care of that. The cardboard that holds it to the cabinets in good condition. Here's the one that came with the cabinet, which is also in pretty decent shape. So I've got two good speakers. And here are the channel plates. So here's the melted black one, and here's the brown one that's in better condition. So, if I was to put that on this cabinet, I guess that's not too bad. Of course, this is dirty. It'll, it'll clean up and look a bit better. So for the time being, it's either that, or this. I think I'll go with the brown and hang on to the black, in case I need it down the road or change my mind. Which leaves the faceplate. Here's the one that came with the black cabinet. Faceplate's not too bad. No chips, and no deep scratches. But the foam backing is in bad shape. It's cracked and kind of nasty. So let's see about the other one. Filthy. Let's see. Uh, it's got some stress fractures on one side. And what might be deep scratches might just be dirt. I'll have to clean this up a bit first to tell for sure. But more stress fractures here. And foam's in similar shape, but doesn't have that crack like this one does. So I think I'll clean this up and maybe go with it if the scratches aren't really too deep. There's one nasty one right across the front. If that buffs out, it's not it, uh, it'll be too bad. Mm -hmm. yeah, this has a lot of scratches too. I guess I'll clean them both up a bit more and make a judgment call. I polished them both up quickly with the Novus number two and well, they both kind of suck, but I guess this one's somewhat worse and has a really nasty deep scratch right there. So, I'll go with this one, which is the one that actually came with the black case to begin with. Alright, that looks pretty good, I guess. There are still some deeper scratches, but the only way I can get those out is to actually wet sand this, and uh, I don't want to bother with that right now. Really, when you're watching the set, when it's powered up and glowing from the CRT, these scratches are far less noticeable. 
Now what I want to try doing is to take some of this white artist acrylic paint and work it into this recess lettering. Shake it up good. And squirt a little bit out. And take this brush and work it in. And then try to wipe up the excess of this paper towel. So and uh, hope that'll work out all right. This is gloss white. I'd rather use satin, but it's all I've got on hand, so I'll see how it turns out. I can always go over this again later, but I don't like the way it looks. Pretty convenient to do such recessed lettering, actually. This engraved lettering goes quite deep into the bake line, so I don't anticipate much trouble with doing this. I'm using a artist acrylic paint. It cleans up with water. That's why I say if I screw up, uh, it should be quite easy to clean off. In the past I've used um, some lacquer sticks, but I don't have any white, I just have gold and red and uh, I think black. I'll let this set up a little bit longer before I start wiping it off. I discovered that a pretty effective technique is to simply let the paint dry and then rub it off with a toothpick. A little tedious, but uh, gets the job done. One thing you never want to use on bake light is metal. I stick with wood and plastic or even a fingernail. I finished cleaning off the excess paint around the white lettering and I think it turned out pretty nice. So it leaves me with one task which is to clean out the speaker grill. I tried a few different techniques, the best thing i found so far is to simply squirt a little bit of Novus Number no. 2 into each one of these cells and then just use a brush and mush it around. Once it dries I will buff it out with Q-tips, toothpicks, whatever it takes. Alright, it took a couple hours, but I finally got all those little squares cleaned out good enough that I'm going to call this done. So I went ahead and slid the chassis bag in and put the knobs on. I did go with the brown channel plate for now. I think it looks alright. And here's the uh, brass plated uh, admiral knobs and uh, two black outer knobs. Not exactly stock. This should be black, and I think this should be black too, but hey. Very few people would know that, and I think it looks pretty good as it is. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and found these tips on Bakelite cleaning useful. The uh, sad thing is I actually have a brown one of these that needs to have the same treatment done to it, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'll save that for, I think, a few months from now, at least. <laughs>